Welcome. In this short video, we're going to learn everything there is to know about adding and writing a story in Personal Historian. Now, Personal Historian lets you write unlimited stories and it keeps track of those. But what we're going to talk about in this particular video is the actual writing of the story, all the options that are available as we do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and click on Add Story and Personal Historian is going to open up the what we call the story editor. Now there's several sections to the story editor. There's the menu which has a lot of commands and we'll talk about those. And then there's a toolbar which are the more common commands so that you can select them by just clicking on a button. Then there's this section where you can provide information about the story, the title of the story, the person's age, any categories, people, or places associated with this story. You can also enter the status, whether you are working on it, it's in progress or completed or whatever. Uh, and you can also uh, select a rating for your story. You have the composer right here, and that's where we're going to actually write the story. And it works basically just like a little word processor. And finally, we have the organizer. And the organizer is an area where you can brainstorm and put ideas about what you want to write about and organize those into an outline. Now, I'm not going to cover that in this video. We have a separate video called Using the Organizer and Personal Historian. So if you're interested in knowing how this organizer works, and I highly recommend it because it's a very easy to use and powerful tool, uh, I recommend that you watch that particular video. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to come up here and enter a title for my story, and we're going to call it uh, Puppy for Christmas. And let's say I happen to remember that I was about six years old, so I'm going to type in six for my age. You'll notice it puts in a date, February 15th. Well, Christmas is the 25th of December, so I'm going to come up here and say, well, 25th of... December of probably 1949. Now you'll notice that as I change that date, it changed the age. And so what this is doing is the date and the age field are connected. So when you enter a date, it will calculate the age for you. On the other hand, if you enter the age, it will calculate the date for you. So this lets you work with either until you get the proper date or the age that you're interested in. Now we're going to come back to categories, people, and places, and we're just going to go ahead and start working in the composer. Now, as I mentioned, it works just like a regular word processor, so I can just start typing. As a child, I had wanted a dog for as long as I could remember. Okay, now, in addition to just doing the text, I can use, oops, well, undo that. I, I, can, I can highlight text and I can turn on bold or italics or underline or turn them back off. So I can use the, the formatting to actually change that. Now I can also go in and change fonts. So if I wanted to use a different font, I can do that as well. So I can format this in just about any way I want. I can change the font size. I can do any of that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and continue on. I'm going to go ahead and continue with this. I'm going to say, Dad certainly wanted me to have one. Now I can continue to type this or I can use a couple of the tools that are built into Personal Historian Story Editor. Um, one of these tools right here is called Dictate Text. And what this lets me do is I can turn this on and it will take everything that I say into the microphone and write it out until I come back into tools and turn this back off. So let's go ahead and turn it on and we'll continue I would spy on my parents discussing the matter, and my dad would insist every boy should have a dog, period. Made perfect sense to me, period. 
new paragraph. But mom's logic always won. She didn't think I could take care of it, period. Looking back, she was right, period. Okay, so now as you can see, this is not necessarily always perfect. Um, so you can you can enter the type, uh, read this, and it will put it in. But mom's logic, uh, logic always one. Okay, it spelled that one wrong. We're using one. And I forgot to say period after that, so that's why it didn't even add a period. She didn't think I could take care of it. Looking back, she was right. Okay, so you can actually use this this dictate to actually say what you want it to put in. And in most cases, that's going to be much faster than what most of us could actually type. Now, the other thing you can do under these tools along with that is kind of the opposite, and that's read to me. And what read to me does is takes what you have written and with a computer voice, it reads it back to you. So I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to hear this, but let's go ahead and give it a try. As a child, I had wanted a dog for as long as I could remember. Dad certainly wanted me to have one. I would spy on my parents discussing the matter and my dad would insist every boy should have a dog. Made perfect sense to me. But mom's logic always won. She didn't think I could take care of it. Looking back, she was right. Okay, now what's really nice about this, having it read back to you, is if you do something like double up a word, there's a lot of times that you will type something in that when you look over it, you don't notice it. But when you have the computer read it back to you, it will sound weird. A word that's in there twice, you will hear it said twice and it helps you to catch some of those things that you might accidentally look over as you're just uh, as you're just kind of looking over to see what else is uh, needs to be done and now the other thing you can we can do is looking back she was right I'm gonna go and I'm just going to copy and paste the rest of this in so whoop, there we go I now have my story in there now Copy and paste is really nice because if you've already been working on a personal history in Word or something, you can go to one of those stories and copy it and just quickly paste it right here into your, into your personal historian story and you don't end up having to type that over. Okay, now as I mentioned, there's some other items here. This is left justified. I can highlight this text and I can right justify it or I can center it, or in this case, I can leave it, leave it left justified. So if I have a particular, if I have a particular paragraph that I want to center to kind of make it stand out, I can do that. Okay, or I can just leave it the way it is. Okay, I also have the ability to add a picture. So I'm going to put my cursor here at the beginning of the paragraph, and I'm going to click on the little picture icon, and Roots, our personal historian is going to open up my file and ask me for which picture I want. So I'm going to say I want this puppy picture and open it and it drops it right in. Now this picture right here is bigger than what I need so I'm going to select it and then click on the little corner and drag it down to make it a little bit smaller. Now once it's highlighted there's some picture tools and this basically lets me choose where I want this picture relative to the text right there. And in this case, I'm going to say I want the picture over here on the right. And I can also choose to have it on the left. So it's up to me, you know, where I want that. But let's say in this case, I want it over there on the right. Okay, so I can do that as well. Okay, I'm going to click back into the text to bring up the regular, the regular menu. And from here, I have a number of options. I have the spell checker. And that's your basic spell checker. I can go through and do my spell checking. I can change misspelled words. I can add them to the dictionary. I can do autocorrect and I can set the various options for the spell checker. I also have a thesaurus. So if I select a word 
magic and I want a better word for it, I can have other options that I may want to choose and replace it with. So if you feel like your, your story is getting kind of repetitive, break out the thesaurus. Now, the final one I'm going to show you right here is measuring a story's readability. And what this does is it analyzes your text there and kind of assigns a grade level. Now, don't, don't think of this as the grade level that you are writing at. Think of it as the grade level that the person is reading at. So you don't necessarily want this grade level to be grade 12. You want it to be such that it's easy to read. In a lot of cases, the people that you want to read this personal history are going to be grandchildren or younger people. And so you want them to be able to read it. You don't want a bunch of big words. You don't want a bunch of long sentences. And so this actually will kind of give you an idea of how your writing is so that uh, and, and, it gives you, and it gives you some suggestions and tips on how to make it so that it will be better uh, and easier to read for those people that you are wanting to have read that. Okay, so let's go ahead and close that. Now, um, as, as I mentioned, you can change the fonts. You also have styles. Uh, I'm not going to really talk about the styles. We have another video just de devoted to using styles in Personal Historian. But quickly, the thing that's nice about a style is I can create a style and um, use that within this story and use it within other stories. And then if I need to make a change to that format, you know, a different font or a little bit different size or, uh, you know, different justification, whatever, I can make that change to the style and that style will then automatically take place on every story where I've used it. It will automatically be used in every place. I don't have to go into each story and change the font manually. It, this, any, any paragraph that I use that, that style for will automatically be taken care of. Okay, so real, let's quickly go hop to here categories. You can assign any, cat, any story to a category. So I'm going to click on categories. I don't have any categories and I'm going to say add new and I'm going to create a category called uh, the early years. Okay, because I got the dog when I was young and I'm going to choose an icon and I'll use a smiley face for this particular category. When I create a category, I can then use it for any other story. I'm going to go ahead and say okay. Now what's nice is I can apply more than one category to a story. So if I click here, I can add another one and I can call it pets. Again, I can choose the icon and I don't know if I have any little animal ones. It doesn't look like it. I'll just use a flag for now. Click OK. And so I now have this in two categories. Now let's say that this is a, that this is a, um, that this is a particular um, story that I might not want to share with other people. So I could actually create another category called private and choose the icon for that and we'll make that a frowny face. Okay. And so now when I go in here, I can make sure that all three of those are done. And this story is now included in three different categories. Okay. I can also choose people. And by people, I can go in and say, add new. And so I might, this one might be uh, the names and it might be my dad, my dad's name. Um, maybe his name was William. Um, oh, what the heck name did I use here? Stuart. William Stewart was the, is the dad and he's male and the relationship is father. And I can enter other information here. But now I've tied it to William Stewart. Well, I've also, mom is also involved in this, and her name is Martha Stewart. And she's female, and she is my mom. Now, one of the things that's nice about this is the relationship doesn't have to be a family member. It can be friend, it can be a neighbor, it can be teacher, student, co-employer. Uh, it can be even other where you, you make up your own relationship. But in this case, 
in this case its mother and so I make sure those are both checked and so I have father and mother places let's say that this was when I was living in Avon Polk County Iowa Okay, and I now have that in places. And so now that I'm done, I have done this, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I, it's not just in progress. I'm gonna say I've completed it. I'm happy with the way this looks. And I'm pretty, pretty happy with this story. So I'm gonna give it a, a rating of four and I'm going to save my story. And I now have my story, A Puppy for Christmas. And it happens to be in category. The category, the primary category is pets plus two others. If I click on that, I can, you know, I can I click, double click on this. I can see those. Um, I was age five, and then that's the date. Now, the place that, um, the place that it, it uses, if I want to edit a story, I just double click on that story. The place where it uses people and places is when you're going to print your personal history, there's an option to print an index, actually two indexes. There's a people index and there's a place index. And anybody that you add to people and places will show up in that index. So that when somebody goes and looks in the index and they come across Martha Stewart, it's going to point to this story. Even though this story is about me and my dog, it's going to point to this story because my mom, in this case, was involved with this story. Okay, so that is how to create a story and all the different options that are available when writing your story. So I hope you find these useful and I hope you are able to use all of these tools to create the perfect personal history.